I think that's a vine snake. And the only way to tell is to get it down. Give it a shot. Devin, can you grab it? Oh, sweet. Dude, it's a McTarazan. Join me, Mike Clarkson, on Zilla's new series, Beyond the Glass, as we study the wild relatives of our captive bred pets in order to better understand how to care for them. Let's go beyond the glass. Today on Beyond the Glass, we traipse through a thick jungle with our eyes on the trees because we're looking for one of my all-time favorites, vine snakes, Atula. This kind of sunrise, sunset, that's when they're gonna be most active. They're not easy to see, but hopefully we'll have some luck. Really beautiful and unique habitat. Gonna enjoy this one. One of the coolest things about keeping vine snakes is you can go crazy on the tank. You use natural plant life, bioactive, something you would do for a chameleon or a dart frog, which you usually can't for other snakes, but they're fairly gentle on the plants. It's really lots of fun. And if you look at these plants, you can find a lot of these in the store. You can make an awesome habitat for them. When you're setting up a vine snake enclosure, there's one plant I can really suggest, and that's pothos. They're all over here, and you can buy them at almost any garden supply nursery. They're cheap, they're impossible to kill. Pothos, get some. This wind is making it impossible to find vine snakes. You're supposed to look for movement in the trees. How do you do that when the trees are moving? We're gonna have to wait for that sun to go down. Finding a vine snake during the day, whether it be of the Asian, South American, North American, or African species, is hard. They camouflage well. It's what they do. But hopefully with a little luck, we might just find one. If not, we've got a plan B. We always have a plan B. With that said, I wanna take the readings right now because this is when they're most active. This is the habitat they're most active in and the time they're most active in. So we're gonna get the readings now, and if we don't find one during the day, We'll try again tonight. snake we're looking for is actually Atula persina, which I've bred, as well as McTerrazans and Nasuta. In my personal experience, they do actually much better with UVB and UVA lighting. So I think these measurements will be important and something moving forward people can use. Vine snakes are awesome, but not a lot of people captive breed them. And UV lighting might be one of the tricks that uh, helps that. We now have our readings. We just have to wait for the sun to set. As soon as it gets dark, I'll show you a really good way to find these guys. Check out this caterpillar. He's just chowing this leaf away. As tempting as it is, fuzzy to caterpillar like this, I'm not gonna try to pet him. It's amazing the kind of things you see when you're looking for snakes sleeping in trees at night. I don't even know how we're gonna fit all these animals in one episode, but a good night's a good night. Whoa, <laughs> check it out. Maned forest lizard. They're a diurnal agamid related to water dragons, and they sleep in the trees, just like the vine snakes we're looking for. All right, buddy, rest on. We're gonna leave you alone now. Just pulled a bronze back 
out of a snake fruit plant. So this snake's got an awesome defensive posture. It flares and you get that black and blue underneath it. So these little guys are rarely kept in the trade. They're really common throughout Southeast Asia. They're diurnal, they are mildly rear fangs, and they're really common. Again, this is how we hope to find the vine snake. Diurnal snakes will sleep at the edges of plants and they shine pretty well in your headlamps. See those big eyes? That's how you can tell this is a very visual predator. Fun little guys. I'm gonna let them go. All right, what we have here is a long-tailed grass lizard. Uh, pretty easy to see why they get this name. He's got a really long tail, he lives in grass, and he's a lizard. Tails on these guys are ridiculously long, and they're also pretty quick to drop them, so you have to be really, really careful when handling them. I mean, look at this thing. They also use this long tail to grip onto things like my finger right now. Probably helps them when hanging out on blades of grass. Pretty neat little lizard more tail than it is body. And they are probably a food source for our target species tonight, the Asian vine snake. All right, guy. I think that's a vine snake. I've never seen one these colors. I've seen them a lot of colors before. They do come in brown, silver, yellow, gold, green. But green and brown is, is a weird looking vine snake if it's a vine snake. And the only way to tell is to get it down. Give it a shot. Hang on, hang on, I'll get it. Devin, can you grab it? Oh, sweet. Dude, it's a McCarazan. Yes. <laughs> okay. So, Macarazans are the smaller vine snake. They're often confused with Otula persina. They often come in as imports as Otula persina. They look similar to the persina, but their eyes are different, their heads are flatter, they're obviously much smaller. And the ventral is this reddish brown, which is what we're seeing from the top. Funny thing that they do is they just stick their tongue out and they hold it out. Watch, let's see, there you go. Just holds his tongue out. Flashlight in my pocket, get him untangled. Now this is a proper adult-sized McCarazan. So this is the second vine snake we've seen, the second McCarazan. Obviously, they're thick in this area. Now we just gotta find the species we're looking for, which is the Persina. He was, he was on the run, so I had to grab him. So, see how light he is? This is a baby McCarazan, or dwarf vine snake. Some Asian vine snakes are born green. Others are born brown. They tend to change colors with age to all be green. This is what we call an ontogenetic color shift. It happens with green tree pythons and emerald tree bugs and a few other species. My guess is it just hasn't matured yet. What a classic example of an ontogenetic color change and a cute little vine snake. Hey, do you see him? I've lost him. I'm immediately regretting these boots. Uh, almost ate it and regained my balance. I dropped the snake. Sometimes they get away. Usually not on the internet though, but it happens. Yep, I'm kicking myself. Dude, 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 okay. This one is not Nicterazans. So we were walking down this way and unfortunately my light woke him up and he started moving down this branch. I thought for sure we were gonna lose him. But this is what we were looking for, Atula persina. And look at that belly. Look at that teal. The white stripe, notice on the Nicterazans there's a yellow stripe. That's how from a distance I could tell them apart. I'm looking, I see a yellow stripe. It's probably Nicterazans, at least here. There are some kind of yellowish stripes, persina or Asian vine snakes elsewhere, 
But here, as a general rule of thumb, your pastinas have this white stripe. These guys are live bearing. Unfortunately, not that many people captive breed them, but they're lizard eaters that can eat brown and old. That's a double win because brown and are invasive in Florida. So if you are feeding brown and old, you're helping the invasive problem and feeding your thing. People breed these, they're awesome. And this guy is just being a gentleman. They can be that way sometimes. Sometimes they're really defensive and other times they're just completely chill. Quick observation, they're usually on these limbs. You need to have a good arboreal structure in your enclosure for these guys to thrive. They're not gonna spend time on the ground unless they have improper humidity. And there's, and there's really no need for hides on these guys. If your snake's hiding on the ground, it's probably not doing very well. It should be in the tree to sleep. So their sticks are their hide, no need for hide. So another thing about these guys living their lives in the trees, they don't come down very often to drink. Instead, they drink pendulant water, meaning water that builds up on the leaves, dew, rain, stuff like that. So in order to properly care for one of these, you must mist the tank consistently. If you don't have consistent water available on the leaves, they will dehydrate, even if there's a water bowl in the tank. This is a good night. This is what I call a good night. So I'm gonna to try to put him back in the tree where he was sleeping, because that's best for him. And see if I can get him to sit still. Don't want him accidentally sleeping on the ground where a predator can get to him. Cool. Well, he's found the tree, so he should be good. 